Hello and welcome to Norwich Ghost Walks. I am the Man in Black and I'm your host on the walks in this wonderful city of ours. Today I want to give you a brief story which is taken from the Ghost Walks in the city of Norwich. And here we are in Tombland Alley. And the story I want to tell you relates to a young girl and some terrible events that took place in 1578 at the time of the visitation to the city of the Black Death. Behind me, you can see one of the plague pits, which were used for the easy burial of thousands and thousands of people at that terrible time. But they didn't just bury people as soon as they were taken ill. In 1578, having already had a lot of deaths among grave diggers in the first visitation of the Black Death in 1342, they decided upon a different tactic. And houses such as this wonderful Tudor Augustine Stewart house that was built in 1549 was the home to what later became known as the Grey Girl and her family. And what the grave diggers would do is they would identify Black Death in a house like this, seal the door up and paint a red cross on the outside. And that is the origins of the red cross as we know it today. So let me take you back then to the time of the Black Death here in the city. The family here, mother, father and two girls were identified as having caught the disease. And so they were sealed inside the building, locked and the Red Cross painted. The standard procedure was to wait for a month until after the death had taken place and the virus had cleared from the dead bodies. What happened next was terrible because the gravediggers came in and took out the mother and father and the eldest daughter. And to their amazement they found that on the calves and the soft parts, fleshy parts of the body, there were bite marks. Not rat bite marks, as you might expect, but human teeth marks. The consternation of the grave diggers was multiplied when they found the fourth member of the family, the young teenage girl. She too was dead, but she did not have the telltale black spots upon her body. She had died differently. She'd actually choked to death. When they opened her mouth, they found human flesh. The poor girl had been locked in here, but for some reason was immune to the Black Death. She died a terrible and lonely death and tried to keep herself alive by feasting upon the dead bodies of her near relatives. So what happened next has been happening for the last 500 years. The grey girl is still with us. She's seen here regularly in Tombland Alley, walking up and down, looking very grey, tattered clothes, long dark hair. She's seen regularly inside Augustine Stewart House, which is actually an antique centre now, and many of the people who work there have seen her and felt her presence. She's been seen on Tombland itself, and indeed, as recently as last year, she was seen inside the Edith Cavell Public House on Tombland. However, the most noticeable recent event was when the vicar of St George's Church was actually practicing his sermon one evening and all the gates were locked. He was completely alone in the church and it was sealed. To his horror, the grey girl came and passed straight through these 18 inch thick walls, walked through the nave, past the vicar and clean out the other side of the building. The vicar up to that time had been a non-believer in the afterlife, but he certainly believes now. Whilst we're looking at St George's, this was a scene of instant justice at the times of the Black Death. Anybody found looting or pillaging would be taken, hands bound behind their back, to the top of the spire, and there they would be cast off, head first, 80 feet to the stones below. And of course it was then a very easy matter for the body just to be rolled over into one of the plague pits that you see before you. That's the story of the Grey Girl. I would love to see you on any of the ghost walks in the city of Norwich. You and your friends would be welcome, where I will entertain you with more stories of this wonderful city of ours. Thank you.